Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 32nd week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. I'm going to actually try out a new format today. Today I'm going to be going over a hand I played in uh, live poker. This is from the $25,000 buy-in World Poker Tour Championship. Um, I actually don't know what my opponent has, so there's only going to be one part to this episode, but I still think it's a pretty cool hand and pretty cool concept whenever you are very deep stacked. So... Let's get right to it. As you can see, we are 500 big blinds deep. And they fold to me on the button. And whenever you're on the button, very deep stacked, you're going to need to raise pretty much every time. Unless you have just like a really bad hand. Like I would probably fold stuff like Jack-2 and 10-3 and 6-2, uh, stuff like that. But anything kind of connected. Like I would raise 4-3. 3-2 I'd probably fold. 5-3 um, I guess I'd fold. 6-3, I'd probably fold, but that's about it. So basically, I'm raising an extraordinarily wide range from the button. And and that's okay, because you're, you're going to be in position and you're really, really deep stacked. You're going to always be getting good implied odds if your opponent's 3-bet. However, if they do 3-bet and you have like one of the junkier hands, like say you raise with, well, 7-6, and say one of the players 3-bets, you just fold. But it's good to always know that you have the implied odds. That way you can call with a lot of your range. Um, so anyways, I like raising here, and I think this is pretty standard. There are no antis in play. I think you could raise it to 600 if you felt like it, but I don't really mind raising to 525. The players in the blinds are actually both older players. This player in the small blinds may be 60 years old, a relatively straightforward player. The guy in the big blind is maybe 50 years old. Uh, he's, he has, he's had some WPT success, and I think he's one of the best older guys, but that being said, I don't really mind taking a flop in position against either of these players. So, um, well, the replayer messed up. Let's try it again. Okay, there it goes. I'm having a little bit of problems with this software. It's not the greatest software in the world. PokerHandReplays.com, but you can definitely check that out and see if you like it. All right, so we flop two pair. He checks, and at this point we have to bet. Uh, the pot has 1150 in it. And I think right here, we need to bet something like two-thirds pot. Anytime the board's super draw-heavy, you really do want to bet something. You know, you don't want to bet, like, 500 here, because your opponent's going to be getting great odds to call, and more likely than not, he does have some little piece of this. It's not like he's going to be drawing completely dead here too often, and if he does, he's, you know, he's probably going to find a fold to no matter what you bet. So, say you bet, you know, 500 or 600, and he has... Jack-10, he's probably just going to fold. Or if he has Ace-2, he's going to fold. But if he has any sort of piece of this board, he's probably not going to fold no matter what, because he probably doesn't know I'm raising almost 100% on the button. And if he thinks I'm raising just sort of a tightish range, this is certainly not a good flop for me. Anytime the board comes middle cards or low cards, that's usually bad for the pre-flop raiser and generally good for the caller. So this is a board where he should be attacking me a decent amount of the time. I don't know if he is. This, this player is sort of tight and aggressive in general, but he is certainly capable of getting a little bit out of line. But uh, I, I do need to bet here. So I bet 700, and he calls, which is no problem. Turns the 8 of spades, which is about the worst card in the deck, which besides, I guess, the 8 of clubs or the 4 of clubs, I guess those would be. I guess a nine of clubs is pretty bad, too. Um, he checks to me, and at this point I have to figure out if I need to bet and what's the purpose of betting, or if I need to check and what's the purpose of checking. So let's talk about what happens if I check first. If I check, if I check and the river's a spade, a club, a nine, a ten, a four, or a three, and he bets, I'm not really happy about my hand, and I'm probably going to have to fold. So that's bad. Um, if he checks on any, pretty much any river, I don't really think I can go for value, so that's also bad. Um, so, so if I do check it back, I'm pretty much done with the hand, unless the, the board sort of bricks out and uh, he he makes a bet, and that I think I can just look him up. And that's that's sort of assuming that my opponent is capable of bluffing a decent amount of the time, which I'm not really even sure this player is. So, I don't really like it. <laughs> um, so if, if he checks and I bet, what's going to happen if I bet? Well, if he has one of the draws, like say he has a flush draw, he's probably going to call. So that's good. We're going to charge the draws. 
If he has one pair of hands, like, say, Ace-8, or maybe even a, slim, a weird 6-5, or, you know, 9, uh, 10, 10 8, 8 6 I guess eight, we lose 8-6. Basically, any hand that has a pair and a gut shot, he's probably going to call. Um, obviously, here he can't have an open-ended straight draw, because if he has a 9, he has a straight, and if he has a 4, he has a straight. But if he has one of the gut shots with the exactly a 10, he's probably going to call again. He may consider a raise. He probably should raise, actually. I guess we'll talk about that whenever we're done. Um, basically, if my opponent has one of the one-pair value hands, I want to bet and get a little bit of value out of those. And the other good part about betting is that it sort of le takes away his opportunity to bluff me. If I if I do check and he checks and he bets the river, I kind of just I have to fold a lot of the time, and that's not really what I want. So right here, I do like a bet. And if he does call me on the river, if he checks, unless I get a seven or a six, I'm just going to check it back. And I I still actually expect to win a decent amount of the time if it does go you know where I bet the turn, he checks the river, and I check. I expect to win. A decent amount of the time. Not a lot, but some percentage of the time. So that is what happens. He checks, I bet, 1,300 into the 2,500, and he does fold. So um, let's talk about how he should be playing his hand if he has one of the draws. This is actually a really good spot against an aggressive player to check raise. This is going to put him in a ton of bad situations. And then on the river, you should strongly consider betting again. Um, you know, you, uh, the two C could certainly have ten nine in his range. He could certainly have two pair. He could certainly have any nine. Um, so even if I'm sitting here with a four, like let's say I, I randomly have ace four, if he check raises me here, it's a terrible spot. So if I'm if I'm folding if I'm considering folding out almost the top of my range, that's always a good spot to go for a check raise. And that's something you can really think about in deep stacked poker. Anytime you're playing very deep stacked and you can apply just a little bit of pressure and make your opponent fold almost their entire range, you should really consider doing it. So this is one of the spots where I really just can't stand much heat unless I have exactly a 9. And, you know, I certainly could have a 9, but, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to have a 9. <laughs> I mean, it's tough to have any exact hand, and in this spot I have to have, like, exactly that 9 to continue. I guess if I had a set, any check raise, I would call, but then I'd fold to the river, to fold to the river bat. So if he does check raise here... I would probably call with all draws, and, you know, sets a draw. A flush draw is a draw. And if he uh, bets again on the river, I would just find a fold. So this is one of those rare spots where you can apply some pressure and get your opponent off almost their whole range, and you should almost certainly do it, as long as your opponent doesn't think you're a maniac. And like I said, this guy is sort of like a 50-year-old, sort of creative guy, but certainly not a maniac by any means. And this would have been a great spot for him to check raise me out of my seat and win the pot. But since I know he's not going to do that... I can just bet the turn and be happy about it. If I knew he was capable of check raising me kind of wide here, I would love a check back on the turn and then a call on any river. Um, I think that would be a much better line. So my line depends a lot on what I think my opponent is capable of doing, and right here I just don't think my opponent's going to be bluffing. So if you guys like this video, definitely let me know. If you hated it, let me know that too. I'm more than open to trying any sort of format you guys would like to see. And um, yeah, let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.